Analysis of indeterminate beams with elastomeric bearings. Consider a two-span railroad bridge. The bridge is supported by elastomeric bearings at the left end and an interior point. The right end is anchored by a pin support. While the pin support prevents vertical displacement, the elastomeric bearings deform slightly under the downward load. This slight settlement at the bearing locations causes a small but measurable shift in the distribution of the bending moment across the structure. Our objective is to determine the extent of these settlements and evaluate their effect on the bending moment distribution. The bridge superstructure rests on two identical I-shaped beams. For the purpose of this analysis, we will focus on one of these beams. An elastomeric bearing consists of layers of elastomer, typically neoprene or natural rubber, bonded to steel plates. This configuration allows the bearing to compress vertically under the bridge's weight, while also accommodating horizontal movement and rotation, which are essential for bridges to withstand various loads and environmental conditions. For our analysis, we will model each bearing as an axial spring. The spring shortens when subjected to a downward load. In this case, as the train moves across the bridge, the beam ends displaced downward, causing differential settlement in each segment. These settlements influence the beam's support reactions and internal forces. Let's analyze the beam. Since the beam is statically indeterminate, we can use the slope deflection method for the analysis. This classical technique is especially useful for beams experiencing support settlements. In this case, the beam consists of two spans. The left span is 20 meters long, and the right span is 15 meters. The beam has a standard W24 by 162 cross-section. The elastomeric bearings have an axial stiffness coefficient of 10,000 kN per meter. We wish to analyze the beam when the train spans the full length of the bridge. The distributed load on each beam is 20 kN per meter. As we showed in a previous lecture, the slope deflection equations for a beam segment can be expressed as where theta is joint rotation. Delta is the relative vertical displacement between the ends of the segment, and W is the magnitude of the distributed load acting on the segment. The axial deformation for each bearing is unknown. Let's designate this deformation as delta A and use delta B for the deformation at support B. So, the relative displacement for segment AB is delta A minus delta B. Given that W equals 20, the slope deflection equations for segment AB become We can express the shear force at each end of the segment in terms of its end moments. Referring to this free body diagram for segment AB, we can write By solving these equations for VA and VB, we get Using the moment equations, we can express the shear equations in terms of theta and delta. Similarly, for segment BC, the slope deflection equations can be written as Here, delta equals delta B, since the pin support at C does not settle. So, the slope deflection equations become Using the segment's free body diagram, similar to segment AB, we can express the member and shear forces in terms of theta and delta. Knowing the member and shear and moment equations, we can proceed to write and solve the joint equilibrium equations for the unknown rotations and displacements. The sum of the moments acting at joints A, B, and C must equal zero. So, we can write MAB equals zero, MBA plus MBC equals zero, and MCB equals zero. We have five unknowns to determine. 
To solve for these unknowns, we need a total of five equilibrium equations. This means we must establish two additional equations. We can use the member end shear forces to get two more equations. The shear force at the left end of segment AB is equal to the force applied to the spring at support A. This force can be expressed as the product of the spring stiffness coefficient, K, and the spring deformation, delta A. This is our fourth equilibrium equation. To establish the fifth equation, we enforce the equilibrium of the shear forces at joint B. Two shear forces act at joint B, VBA and VBC. The sum of these two forces represents the axial force in the spring. Therefore, we can write VBA plus VBC equals K times delta B. Now we have our five equilibrium equations. We can express the equilibrium equations in terms of the unknown rotations and displacements using the member end shear force and moment equations. The expanded equations are since we know the modulus of elasticity of the material and the moment of inertia of the beam's cross section, we can solve these equations for the unknown joint rotations and displacements using any standard method, such as Gaussian elimination. By solving these equations simultaneously, we obtain Substituting these values back into the member and shear and moment equations, we get Let's show these forces on the beam's free body diagram. Now, we can draw the moment diagram for the beam. To conclude the lecture, let's make a simple comparison. A similar beam supported by rollers, rather than elastomeric bearings, would have different support reactions. In that case, the reaction at the middle support would be higher than what we just calculated. When the roller supports are replaced with elastomeric bearings, the middle support experiences significant settlement. This results in a decrease in the reaction force at the middle support and, consequently, an increase in the reaction forces at the ends of the beam. This shift in support reactions leads to an increase in the positive bending moment and a decrease in the negative bending moment in the beam. Specifically, the positive moment in the left span increases from 635 to 698 kN meters, and in the right span, it increases from 230 to 375 kN meters. Meanwhile, the maximum negative moment decreases from 813 to 659 kN. This comparison shows how elastomeric bearings could redistribute forces and moments in beams.